everybody. We are super excited to be here with you. Today is officially our first day of open registration for the Restoration Thyroid Nutrition Group Coaching Program. And we are here to kind of talk to you about some of the things that we see going on within the nutrition industry that we feel are really going to help you. Today, we're going to be talking about six different ways stress can lead to hypothyroid symptoms or hypothyroidism. It's not only in the industry, it's what's going on with you, yeah. right? People are going to the doctor, they don't feel good, they get all their labs done and they're told they have a thyroid problem, whether you're 22 or 32 or 42. You're put on medication, you don't feel good, it doesn't work, they increase your medication and it's this constant dance that happens whether you have a thyroid, you don't have a thyroid, the list goes on. And it's, it, and it's, people are being treated but it's not working, people are not healing and that's why we, 15 plus years ago created our approach to really help people say, who am I, how am I living, what got me here, and how do I support myself to break that cycle to actually create change in my body, in my physiology, and how I heal. So why are we talking about stress when we just focus on the thyroid? Well, through some of these videos, and, and over the next few weeks, we're gonna be talking about more specifically why, but when you think about stress, the definition truly is when the demands being placed on the system, your system, exceed what the system can handle, right? So we're over living, we're overdoing it, we're going, 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 we're over training, we're under eating, we're over eating, whatever it may be. We're constantly withdrawing money from our bank account and not putting enough in. What does that leave us? It leaves us in an energy deficit, right? And that is stress. Right. Right, so most of us, again, have been led to believe that stress may be a relationship or maybe finances or maybe the kids work, but we're not really considering, again, what energy deficits, when our bodies are not able to meet the demand of our day, what that means to how your brain is communicating to the rest of your body. And the important thing about what we're trying to do is this. If you begin to meet your energy needs every day with food or how you're living, when you wake up, what do you do when you wake up, how you go throughout your day, if you're putting energy in your bank account, you're still withdrawing some, but putting energy in that increases your adaptability, increases your resiliency. So now, right, the demands being placed on the system do not exceed what the system can handle. Now the first way stress can lead to thyroid issues is dysglycemia, which is a fancy word for high blood sugar, low blood sugar. This can happen from eating a diet low in protein, high in carb, just imbalance ratios, living beyond our means, stress like we just talked about. And this is important because anytime that happens, we create inflammation and we don't have enough glycogen stored in the system, A, because it's not coming in, B, we're overliving, right? Which is very important to convert thyroid hormone. So in this case, there's no thyroid problem. The thyroid is actually completely fine. It's producing hormone. The thyroid hormone it's producing, which is T4, is converted in the liver. This is where the problem is now because of dysglycemia. Now we don't have that energy storage because we're living beyond our means, so we can't convert that T4 into active thyroid hormone T3. Right. And until you're able to regulate your blood sugar, there's nothing you can do that's going to help you fix your thyroid. The second way stress can lead to hypothyroidism is through disruption of what's called your hypothalamus pituitary adrenal thyroid gut access, right? So any stress response is going to affect this. Your hypothalamus speaks to your pituitary and your pituitary speaks to your adrenals. So any disruption there is going to affect your body's ability to be able to produce thyroid hormone in the way it's intended to, again, based off those energy deficits that your body's experienced because you're not meeting the demand of each day. These are just blocking factors. So the more stress in the body, the more the adrenals kick in and release these hormones, these create blocking factors in the body which affect thyroid hormone conversion, which again, the thyroid is fine, there's just no signaling signals coming out to the thyroid to tell it to do what it's supposed to do. And we have to remember that those stress hormones alone will block their ability. And again, the way we were speaking, because your body cannot retain that energy, the energy needed to make those conversions because of the state that your body's in. 
The next is reduced thyroid hormone conversion. You have to understand all of these overlap, right? So anytime we have recirculating estrogen, we have high estrogen, we're not storing glycogen, we're not regulating our blood sugar, we're deficient in minerals, we have high stress hormones, we affect the conversion of thyroid hormone. Your thyroid's fine, it produces all your thyroid hormone, but 90% of it is converted in the gut, I think, or 80%, 10 to 20, I'm sorry, in the liver, 80 to 90%, 10 to 20% in the gut. So if we don't have what we need to convert it, the thyroid's producing it, but it just can't be converted. And this is very common, and if you think of the first two we just talked about, blood sugar, stress, these are conversion issues. And we, I would have to say, and I think you would agree, this is the most common thing we see with everyone. Why? Because we look at their thyroid lab and we look at their body temperature and pulse patterns, right? And we see once we start feeding them and they eat throughout the day, we start to see stability in temp and pulse, which shows us that now we're converting thyroid hormone yeah. and there's nothing wrong with the thyroid. And it's really this state that's creating, again, those disruptions in how the brain is communicating with your endocrine system. It's what causes those blood sugar imbalances, right? Because there's no stored energy on board. You have to think if you're pushing on the accelerator and you're out of gas, Maybe not the best example. <laughs> it is. It is a good example. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, but you, there's nothing there to keep the car going, exactly. right? So you're going to burn the engine. And the same thing, this is what we see people waking up in this state every single day and going about their day without any replenishment. Again, day after day, week after week, month after month, that's going to create some neurological disruption there. The fourth way stress contributes to hypothyroidism is through the breakdown of your immune system. Stress hormones are known to break down your first line of defense and leave you very, very vulnerable to pathogens, bacteria, and food intolerances, SIBO, name some Candida. other ones. Candida, thank you. I was having a little bit of a brain fart there. Candida. Those types of things, Hashimoto's is such a huge one here, right? And that's very common. We see people like chasing their food intolerances or being diagnosed with a thyroid problem when they have Hashimoto's. You have to understand that Hashimoto's is an autoimmune issue. It's not a thyroid issue. And if you study the work of Dr. Karazi and others, he even says right up front that Hashimoto's is treatable with nutrition and can be healed nutritionally. And they don't need medication. And these are the things we're working on with people with food to help get that blocking factor out of the way, like Jeannie mentioned, so we can build up their immune system again. And this goes back to the entire state of the gut, right? So many of you with leaky gut and, th and again, going back to the food intolerances, SIBO, we have to work at the top. We have to work with the energy systems. If we don't bring the body out of that state, you can try to heal your leaky gut, heal your SIBO, heal your candida, create more balance within the entire... Um, GI system, but you're not eliminating the stress. You're not working with the very thing that's shutting it down in the first place. The fifth way stress can lead to symptoms of thyroid issues or hypothyroidism is hormone imbalances. Now, something that a lot of people don't talk about is prolonged exposure to stress hormones because all the things we talked about in the beginning, right, and not regulating your blood sugar, etc will decrease the liver's ability to do a lot of things. One of those things is to detoxify estrogen. Anytime estrogen goes up, it'll increase a protein in the blood called thyroid binding globulin. Simple, it bounds, bond, it bounds up thyroid hormone, which means there's less bioavailable hormones, which gives the illusion that the, the, there's a thyroid problem. It's not, the thyroid's fine, it's being produced, it's getting bound up to those proteins which gives you kind of that false positive to lead a doctor to believe you have a thyroid problem. So you can see how stress affects the many facets of the liver, but also affects our ability to basically detoxify a hormone, which can lead to thyroid problems. As well as produce our hormones, right? right. If we can't produce thyroid hormone or convert thyroid hormone, I should say, we are not gonna be able to produce our steroidal hormones. So again, Josh was talking about estrogen, but we wanna also mention that nine times out of 10, we're seeing more women with a progesterone deficiency because of that state of stress. The body's always going to prioritize and there is a hierarchy. Progesterone is a precursor to cortisol. It's going to, it's going to prioritize that stress state over procreation um, cycles, things like that.
where women will end up with a progesterone deficiency, which will look like an estrogen dominance. The last way stress can create thyroid-like symptoms is thyroid resistance. Now, this is very common, and we see this a lot with a lot of our patients, our clients, and it really comes from, in our opinion, from people that are being prescribed the medication when they don't need it, or if they need it, they're being prescribed the wrong medication or too much medication. So what happens is, and this is the scenario, people will have elevated TSH, etc. They go on the medication, maybe they feel a little better, maybe they feel worse, Maybe they don't feel anything at all. Over time, right, they go past the balance point. They're here and they want to get to here, but no one pays attention. And now they end up past the balance point. So what happens is they start to feel worse. They get anxiety, right? They don't have an appetite. They start having sleep issues. And now they start to see their TSH and other values drop even less. Like they're like, I don't know what's going on. My TSH was five in the beginning. Three years later, it's 0.1. What's happening, right? So what's happening is this. The system is being flooded with so much thyroid hormone. It's just like insulin resistance. Same thing. Thyroid resistance. The cells shut down the thyroid hormone because there's too much in the system. It doesn't need it. So it creates such a backlash in the system that it starts to drop things, people feel worse. Now, we're not doctors, we're not saying go off your thyroid medication, but along with our approach and educating our clients to talk to their doctors, over time, it allows them to get back to that balance point so their cells open up and pull in that thyroid hormone again. So where do you go from here? A lot of information, it's all the same, it's a conversion problem. Well, this is why we created our RTN approach. Now, in the RTN online group coaching program, this, these are all the phases we're taking people through to regulate their blood sugar, right? So they take the burden off the adrenals and the stress hormones and get rid of those blocking factors, right? We're giving the body what it needs to meet the demand of the day. And that's like Josh says, gonna bring those stress hormones down and allow us to be able to produce that energy. In the beginning phases, we have to begin to do for the body what it's not doing for itself. And it's very intentional, it's very strategized because it is all about you and what your body needs to thrive each day. And when you get rid of those blocking factors, now through the metabolic foods, through learning when you need to eat, what you need to eat, how you need to eat, it's about you, it's about no one else. It's not about a blog. It's about what you need and what your physiology needs, right? When we do that, now we start storing energy, we can convert energy, and now we start changing our state, like we said in the beginning. Now the demands being placed in the system in life don't exceed what the system can handle. So now we're just supporting the body to create health every single day. Right, keeping in mind that that's where your body's trying to go. It's just recognizing that over the years, the tools that you need to meet that goal have been depleted for lots and lots of different reasons. And we're here to help bring you back, guide you back to that state of balance through teaching you how to use your food to do all of the things that we just talked about.